What are the downsides of marijuana that people don't know? C-R-N-A here. Had to read up on the condition myself. But it's called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. Had a 20-year-old patient who's vomiting dry, even was so forceful that he inadvertently ruptured his spleen and required urgent surgical intervention. He had previously ruptured part of his esophagus the same way. Turns out the central receptors that allow weed to act like an anti-nausea medication can get overwhelmed by the G receptors for weed, which actually induce nausea. He was a daily user. Though I'm not sure how much or for how long. I haven't had a full-on anxiety attack. But I do feel constricted sometimes from it. Like, I can't wait for it to be over. So I can just exhale and relax. Also, now that it's basically legalized where I live, I just smell it all the time. I'm not a prude against it or anything. But I don't particularly feel safe when I'm stuck at a red light and I smell it from a neighbouring car. Or when I'm waiting for my son to get out of school elementary and smell it coming from other cars who are there to pick up their kids too. If you have a predisposition for mental illness that you may not be aware of, especially schizophrenia, we can trigger an episode. It can go to ways it wears off. Will you just triggered a psychotic episode and never really come out of it unless medicated? It is, however, very difficult to treat people with schizophrenia due to their severe paranoia. Amongst other is a terrible illness. People don't realize that those with predisposition are essentially playing the Russian roulette. Randy Well. Stan. The truth is marijuana probably isn't gonna make you kill people. And it most likely isn't gonna fund terrorism. But, well, son, Pot makes you feel fine with being bored. And it's when you're bored that you should be learning some new skill or discovering some new science or being creative. If you smoke pot, you may grow up to find out that you aren't good at anything. It will make you too comfortable, like without weed. The boredom irritation you feel from whatever your situation is can incentivize you to change. Or you can get high and be immediately comfortable and before you know it years have passed. Saying that as someone who did exactly that for like 10 years, now that I've quit, it's so much easier to find the will to change things. For me it was complacency. If I smoke I can sit in my room and play video games all day no problem. If I don't smoke, I feel the need to be productive and get things done before I indulge in my time wasting fun activities. Not a huge problem on its own. But when you smoke every day and become complacent with going nowhere for years, then it can be a big problem. There was an anti-drug commercial from the 90s that accurately portrayed the danger of long-term use. Short explanation is 30-year-old bragging about how pot is safe because nothing ever happened to me. Which becomes a double entendre when we find out he's still living in his parents' basement. So, into a lazy sack of crap is a real threat. I've been smoking regularly for several years and honestly the biggest downside is that it makes you extremely okay with being lazy and not getting anything done. I used to be one of those folks who always had to be doing something and was rarely idle. Now, in my free time, I only want to get comfortable while doing nothing and be completely unbothered. Don't wake up and smoke in the morning. Do not wake and bake. I'm pretty old and I've never been anti pot but every single person who I've known in my life who smoked early in the day has turned into a person with no ambition who cannot accomplish simple goals. Pot is an end of the day. After you accomplish something, Scooby Snack sabotages most people's diets when you're old unless you're a freak who doesn't get an elevated appetite. Not even necessarily full-fledged munchy binge eating, but that one to extra tacos after dinner will take its toll. At 20 I could eat 12 Kit Kat bars in bed high as a kite and not gain weight. At 40 I might not wake up. The withdrawal side of things when you quit. Sweats. Can't regulate my temperature. Insomnia is awful. Two hours of sleep over three days. Lack of appetite. Barely eating as you're coming down. Then it hits you that life is stressful still and sometimes it's more fun to be high than it is to be bored.
derealization, the personalization. A few days of this is pure mental torture. This was enough to make me quit cold turkey for six months, I'm counting now, and has completely altered my opinion on THC. In these sober six months, I have also noticed uptick when it comes to motivation drive. It can take over your whole life to the point that you feel you need to smoke before or after a meal, before going somewhere, before doing anything, before bed, before relax time, even before work. It's not just a casual thing to some people. It's a real addiction. Jobs. It's illegal federally, so a lot of places still test for it, especially better paying ones in my area. Or if you get hurt on the job, even while sober, but it pops up in your test because you smoked a joint last week. No workman's comp and probably fired. Besides the ones I'm aware of, namely memory, concentration, mental health, addiction, health problems, strong impact on young people, and additionally difficulty in everyday matters such as driving. It's definitely addictive. The people who I know that smoke tell me they legitimately cannot go a day without smoking. They also use marijuana to help with their anxiety or depression, but it just suppresses it until you sober up. Most people don't know that marijuana use can impair cognitive function, memory and coordination, especially in heavy or prolonged users. Also, frequent use can lead to dependence and withdrawal symptoms. People who say is an addictive need to meet my ex who once cry, literally bawled his eyes out. Because I spent our last bit of money on food for our child instead of letting him buy weed. I'm an anesthesiologist. It increases the amount of anesthesia we need to give you, and increases the risk of you being awake during anesthesia. Please tell your drive how much you smoke. It has been known to trigger symptoms for people with psychotic disorders. It does not cause these disorders, but sometimes the cannabis user is unaware of their dormant mental state. Regular use seems to fuck with my ability to pay attention and remember shit when I'm sober. It's one of the reasons I quit. Not sure others have these issues though. Uncontrollable vomiting in some long-term users can make you content with an existence you wouldn't be content with sober. Guess whether you want to view this as a positive or a negative is up to everybody as individuals. It's addictive. I have heard so many people say it's not addictive, it is. Sure, it's not heroin, alcohol, tobacco addictive, but it is habit-forming and addictive. Marijuana use can lead to impaired coordination and reaction time, increasing the risk of accidents and injuries especially when driving or operating machinery. Smoking is horrible for your heart. Even edibles have a cardiovascular impact of abnormal heart rates, which could increase your risk for a CV event. Dreams, or the lack their daily use you rarely remember any dreams. When you take a break for a week, the dreams become very vivid. Marijuana use may interfere with the effectiveness of certain medications, leading to potential health risks or treatment complications. Perhaps slightly off topic, but do regular weed smokers realize how badly it makes them smell, or do you become nose blind to the odor? Long-term marijuana use has been associated with an increased risk of developing chronic bronchitis and other respiratory conditions. Using marijuana during pregnancy may harm the developing fetus and lead to low birth weight, premature birth, or other complications makes you an actual idiot. I was a daily smoker for years and stopped a while ago. I can actually do basic math in my head again. I was a regular smoker for seven years until I started getting extreme panic attacks. Stop smoking and they have subsided fully. Marijuana use can impair short-term memory and cognitive function, affecting attention, concentration, and learning abilities. Tolerance used to be so fun and giggly. Now it's just a coughing fit that keeps you from punching your boss in the face. Mood swings, especially if you start at an early age. It can really end up making you feel quite depressed at times. As a fat man, the munchies are real and they can hit hard. If you're trying to lose weight, 
Speed is not your friend. Memory loss. I've lost huge chunks of amazing memories from my younger years. Without photos I'd never remember. When I stopped, I started dreaming again. I was so sad to realize that I had missed out on decades of dreams. Hugh, what did the Grateful Dead fan say when he ran out of drugs? Or what is this shit we're listening to? It's shown to alter the brain in younger people. The minimum age should be in the early 20s based on studies. Marijuana use can affect fertility in both men and women, potentially leading to reproductive health issues. I would think the tendency to wear raped and or dirty pajama pants in public would be the biggest one. You lose discipline. You don't get shit done. You can't resist your temptations like binge eating, mixing marijuana with other substances such as alcohol or prescription medications, can increase tea, not for flour but extracts diamonds, distillate, infused weed etc. Do a number on my G system. It can still cause lung cancer if you smoke it. It's still a foreign contaminant in your lungs. Doing weed when you're younger really does affect you, and a stoner brain is very real. It seems like it would help you sleep better, but I feel less rested in the morning. Long-term use can have effects on the brain especially if it is a developing brain. Lighting anything on fire and inhaling the fumes is terrible for your lungs. Come health. Dry mouth is awful for you so chew gum and stay hydrated. Smoking anything is bad for your lungs marijuana, hooker included. Gives me huge anxiety attacks and exacerbates my depression.